We are back here today with another mock drift reaction. You guys really enjoyed the video mock drift I reacted to on ESPN's YouTube channel a couple days ago. So today I'm going to be reacting to CBS Sports full first round video mock draft. It's about 40 minutes long. Now, don't worry. I'll be cutting some of this. It's not going to be 40 minutes to watch. But yeah, we got 30 first round picks to react to. This should be fun. If you guys enjoy this style of content, I would appreciate you dropping a thumbs up. We are so close. And I mean so close to 100,000 subscribers. So if you're not subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you did. And then as I've been saying, this Thursday, when it's the NBA draft, I'm going to be live streaming the whole first round on this channel. So you want to be subscribed to see that. So without further ado, let's hop into this mock draft reaction. Definitely though, is that he is totally unprecedented. He's someone that NBA teams, including the Spurs, have game planned for uh, in terms of increasing their chances of, of being able to win the lottery and select him, seemingly changes the fate of their franchise for the next next decade plus. And the Spurs have done really well. Yeah, with it's it. crazy when he was like 18 playing um, in, in France, like in the pro leagues over there. And it's crazy the talent as well. Like this is so much more impressive than for sure like the overtime elite. It's like weird how you would rank collegiate basketball, uh, the G League, and then international. This is a pretty tough week to be doing 21, 10, and 3. They're number one picks in the past, for sure, Upstairs. between David Robinson <laughs> and Tim Duncan, and now Victor Weminyama. And it seems like the unanimity kind of ends after the first pick. Gary, who's yours at number two overall to the Charlotte Hornets? I have Charlotte uh, taking Brandon Miller out of... All right, some more Brandon Miller talk. It's just a mock. It's not his big board unless he says otherwise. Alabama with the second pick in this 2023 NBA draft. I realize there are other reasonable options there. Scoot Shout out to the Saul Goodman bobblehead on his bookshelf. Sorry. Henderson, one of them. I'm um, in Thompson, another. But I, I simply think that Brandon Miller is a comparable talent, if not better talent, than anybody in this draft other than Victor Wimbanyama. And mm -hmm. out of the... Uh, prospects who could be considered reasonable options in this spot. Uh, I think he's the best fit with LaMelo Ball, who, of course, is Charlotte's franchise point guard. 6'8 wing, average 18.8 points, 8.2 rebounds per game. And here's the key stat. Shot above 38% from three on 7.5 attempts per game. He has a skill that is obviously translatable. Every franchise is looking for big wings who can make shots. Brandon Miller will enter the NBA with those two qualities attached to him, and he's probably going to have a very, very long and I would assume successful career. All right. So we yeah, so he he's Miller over Scoot. I still like Scoot better as a prospect, but Miller is my third ranked player in this draft, and I think like the gap is is not like a big gap at all. Like take Miller too. I, I'm fine with it. At the end of the day, I would still take Scoot and then figure it out, but. Yeah, Miller really might be a Hornet. With Brandon Miller off the board at number two to the Charlotte Hornets, the Portland Trailblazers this is an easy are up one. at number three. Kyle, who do you have them take? Yeah, I'm going to make the easy pick here, Russ. I'm going to go with Scoot Henderson with the number three pick. This is a guy who I think is the number two prospect in this class coming from G League Ignite. This is a guy who has long been regarded, I think, as a top two prospect in this class, even dating back to a year ago when we were debating whether it was Victor Wimanyama or Scoot Henderson as the number one player in this class. This is a guy who the last two seasons has spent with G League Ignite, shot 32.4% from three this past season after shooting around 17% from three in his first season. So he's made a ton of strides as a shooter. I think he's the best playmaker. I guess like if Scoot's on the board, man, and you could get like a like a really great offer for three, I guess you'd do it, right? Like you still have Shaden Sharp and Amphrey Simons. You still have a later first round pick in this draft. I mean, but then again, if you're trading three, you're probably attaching Simons as a contract with it. Unless you can get off that Nurkic contract a little bit and upgrade it to five. In this draft, arguably the most athletic player in this, in this draft. You can see kind of the balance here. He is a very exciting prospect. Someone who I'm not entirely sold on fit wise when it comes to Damian Lillard with the Trailblazers, but I think just taking the best talent available here for Portland makes the most sense. And to me, that is Scoot Henderson. All right, first G League player off the board here in this mock draft. We swing it back around. There'll be a couple. Adam at number four with the Houston Rockets. They're on the clock. Who you got? So I think what Houston should do here is take the highest upside prospect left on the board. And that, in my mind, is Amen Thompson. Uh, six foot seven with a seven foot wingspan. 
and a truly elite athlete. I mean, we're talking about one of the best athletes in the NBA from day one of his rookie season. It's true. It's like crazy how like insane of an athlete he is already. I just would love to know where James Harden is going because then we can stop mocking. Like, I just think a man at four would be silly if they're bringing in Harden. Everybody's mocking a man at four. It's it's like, should we stop doing it? Like, is it too obvious where it's just not going to happen? What makes him really interesting, though, is he's got potential to be a primary playmaker. You can put the ball in his hands. He's already very advanced in terms of a passer. His burst in terms of his ability to uh, get to his line with his first step and obviously the leaping ability in the open floor, it's just second to none in this draft class. And again, it's going to be among the very best in the NBA. So if you put him, uh, project him out a few years, if he can evolve into that big lead guard with those measurables and even tap into some of that defensive upside, you've got something significant despite the fact that that he is not a good shooter of the basketball right now all right that's two straight g league players with another thompson still on the board gary who do you have the pistol well, he said two straight g league players and thompson was not in the g league since taking at number five i have him taking jarris walker the one and done forward out of the university of houston just like adam said about the houston rockets with the fourth pick i think with the fifth pick detroit should be looking for best prospect available and it's not clear who that is but I really like Jairus Walker. He will enter the NBA with a body unlike most one-and-done players possess. He is put together, looks different when you see him on the court. Great athlete. He's 6'7", super size. strong. So he's going to be able to play the four in the NBA and also some small ball five. He's way more advanced defensively right now than he is offensively, but you see it there. He can make that shot. 34.7% uh, from three. Uh, on the season that's respectable it needs to improve if he's really going to be a, a stretch the floor type uh, forward but there is potential for him to be a, a fabulous offensive player as well the defensive stuff is going to be there no matter what great help defender he can guard his position if the offense comes around you're getting a super talent with a top five pick. Yeah, I like a big man going, especially a power forward to the Pistons there at four. I think a little bit more than, or excuse me, at five, than Cam Whitmore. Uh, Jidel actually mocked Taylor Hendricks to the Pistons uh, in yesterday's video, which I was like, whoa. I haven't really thought about that, but I kind of like it a lot because I think he could be a nice complimentary piece to continue Cade, uh, Cunningham, Jaden Ivey's development, which is more important than probably this pick here at five. This is going to be like a complimentary developmental piece, right? So I think getting Walker, maybe a Hendricks, is pretty valuable here. Somebody that can defend, that could be a pick and roll um, just partner to Ivy and Cunningham. And I, I love Walker there at five still. All right, that's it for the team. See, I feel like this has been mocked. Like, like this one through five has been pretty close. Like, there's some discrepancy at two and three. But is this, like, too obvious where it's going to end up being, like, Asor Thompson here at five? Or is it going to be, like, Anthony Black? Hippie top of this draft. Much thanks to CBS Sports Cobbloon and Gary Parrish, along with Adam Finkelstein at 24-7 Sports. Here's another look at how the top five played out in this week's mock draft. We'll see how these hold up as we continue to get closer and closer to June 22nd and the actual first round. Air. Boncaro with with the number six pick. Yeah, they're going to pair him with a, a playmaking wing in this class. So I'm really high on Asar Thompson from Overtime Elite. He's six foot. I mean, Asar, like, I've been mocking him to Orlando at six, man. I think it's too obvious. We may have to switch some things up. Six. He has a seven foot wingspan. Guy who's, I think, an improving playmaker. Average 6.1 assist per game last season for Overtime Elite. I sat down with Asar Thompson and Amen Thompson at the Combine in Chicago last month and, and asked them, how would you rank yourself in this class, in, including Victor Wembanyama, Scoot Henderson? And they both agreed, Asar Thompson is number two in this class. Asar ranked himself number two, Amin and Asar both ranked Amin number one. So I think that kind of uh, speaks to kind of the expectations that both of these players have, the belief that they have in themselves. They've taken an unconventional path to get to the NBA. It's cool because we haven't seen this like two lottery twins since like Marcus and Markeith Morris back in like 2013, 14, 15, I forget the year out of Kansas. So this would be cool that both these guys are most likely going in the top 10, possibly yet yeah, in the top six. Going. One of the worst kept secrets of this NBA draft cycle is that Indiana needs a four man. Uh, and I think the assumption is they're gonna target a four man uh, with this pick. Uh, and for me, there's, there's a few different options. I think you've still got a couple of, of uh, high upside prospects on the board, but they're not at the position. So he's going to go Taylor Hendricks? You need Taylor Hendricks yeah. to me is some Over Cam Whitmore. I wonder if that's going to happen on draft night. Uh, I don't know. Someone 
that has one of the highest floors in this draft. Not a whole lot of potential as a creator, um, but when it comes to the 3 and D prototype, someone who can move his feet out on the perimeter, who can block shots inside at the rim, and then who can stretch the floor as a shooter, almost 40% just under it as a freshman, uh, really just blew away expectations at, at UCF so far. I do, like, I really like Hendricks. Like, top, I think he's my 10th ranked prospect or 11, but I do think he's becoming a little bit overrated, at least I feel like on, like, the Twitter draft community or on YouTube, like, even mocking him at five, I thought was crazy. And I think somebody came out with that. I forget if it was Bleacher Report or The Ringer, but there is a pretty decent margin between how much like we like Taylor Hendricks to NBA GMs. And it's not looking like he's going to go in the top six. Seven, I think Indiana is like the highest that he will go. I don't think he goes like to Detroit at five or to Orlando at six or a team trading up ahead of Orlando or Indiana. NBA, when you get someone this size who's this switchable on the defensive end of the floor and then can bring a skill set that extends out to the three point line, that's a player that's got a long, long term future in this league. Yeah, like if right, Gary, Taylor Hendricks goes before like Jairus Walker, I'd be very shocked. The Wizards made a complete overhaul of their front office this offseason. Who do you have them taking with the first pick of the new regime at number eight? Anthony Black out of Arkansas, the one and done. Like this has been mocked a ton. Everybody's mocking this. Guard who was not the most heralded prospect in Arkansas's heralded recruiting class, but he did prove to, to be the best NBA prospect. I do like Cason Wallace and Kobe Bufkin over him. Prospect uh, by the time we got through that one season, in part because uh, his more heralded teammate, at least coming out of high school, Nick Smith Jr., uh, was dealing with a knee issue most of the season. Anthony Black, he's a 6'7 point guard who is really, really advanced in pick and rolls. He can play make, shot create, can see things. It's a cool stat. First D1 freshman to average 12, 5, 3, and 2 since Marcus Smart at Oklahoma State back in 2013. Develop high basketball IQ. If you're looking for some downside, he only shot 30% from three point range. That's obviously not great but he's still a, a fascinating lead guard prospect, very much worthy of being selected into the top 10. If he can ever uh, get that shot figured out and make it more reliably from the perimeter, then you've got somebody who has all-star level potential. But even without it, he's gonna be able to do so many things with the basketball in his hands that he should be a starter in this league for a long, long time. Heck of a the Nick Smith salad on top of that head, too. I'll tell you right now. Kyle, uh, the Jazz. <laughs> Wait, what? Heck of a salad on top of that head, too. I'll tell you right now. Kyle, uh, the Jazz. <laughs> they're up next at number nine. Who do you got the Jazz picking here? Yeah, I have them take. Yeah, does that affect uh, Anthony Black's vision if he can't see with his hair being long? Picking Cam Whitmore here from Villanova yeah. with the number nine pick. Cam this is crazy. Cam Whitmore's at the Jazz. Is he going to fall to nine? Whitmore. I look for guys who have elite traits, elite, elite skills. Cam Whitmore has that, and it's with his verticality, his athleticism. He's a guy who can play above the rim, one of the most athletic prospects in this class, I think his game will translate to being a kind of a three and D wing at the NBA level. I like his shooting potential. Last season, he rated in the 86th percentile as a spot up shooter, as a true freshman at Villanova. That's according to Synergy data. So I think his game really projects nicely to the NBA level. He definitely needs to improve his shot his consistency. He needs to improve his playmaking. Would love to see him give some more effort on defense. But the physical tools, I think what he showed in flashes at Villanova, really exciting kind of building block and foundation uh, that can give this Jazz franchise kind of a rebuild as it, as it continues to reboot. And now we have reached the end of the top 10 and just about the end of this segment. Only one more player is going to be able to say they were a top 10 pick in 2023. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks have that pick. Who they take? Yeah, so this is somewhat counterintuitive because the Mavs need some front If this court. is the way the draft fell, I guess I would look at Cason Wallace here. Still, just as like a defensive-minded uh, guard, but they do need some like upside, man. Do they look at Keontae George or just somebody with more size that could, I mean, help them out on the defensive end in the front court? Maybe they trade down if this is how it felt. Like if they're not getting Taylor Hendricks or Cam Whitmore at ten, maybe they trade down because I just don't know if I love Grady Dick in Dallas. Let's see who he has. I'm taking. For help, they've got Luka Doncic. They've got Kyrie Irving. Doncic. Uh, and I'm going to take a guard because, quite frankly, somebody's got to play some defense. So, uh, Cason Wallace is going to be the pick here. 
This does a few different things for Dallas. All kidding aside, it gives them a defensive oriented guard who can play on and off the ball. So he can fit alongside either one of those star guards. It also gives them an insurance policy if the Kyrie Irving experiment goes bad, if it has, if it does like it has in every other situation Kyrie Irving has been. Um, Kaysen Wallace to me is one of the most efficient, tough, versatile guards in this class. You can put him virtually on any team and he's going to find a way to carve out minutes he's going to defend and his offense was far better than we expected last year at kentucky and the orlando magic will take jalen hood shafino the one and done guard. at 11. ah if you're gonna go like a point guard i would go a little bit more into the combo guard sphere and kobe bufkin's on the board i'd even like nick smith better than jalen hood shafino to orlando i don't like this pick at 11 at all hard out of indiana yeah. Jalen played. Like Grady Dick's on the board too. They could use some shooting. You took a sore at six. For Just Team saying. Thad on the EYBL Nike circuit. And I saw him two summers ago because yeah. Team Thad is based out of Memphis, my hometown, in a gym in advance of Peach Jam. And I sort of went in there not knowing exactly what to expect because, you know, he was a you know four-star prospect, top 50 guy, but certainly not heralded like some of the other players in his class. And I just remember that day in the gym, he not only controlled the game, but dominated it run after run after run and very much looked the part as somebody who would have a chance to be one and done now here we are and I could even see him on draft night going in the top 10 he's six foot four can play that'd either backcourt position Jonah Javino is a top 10 pick that'd be wild he's a good enough athlete and a better shooter than he showed at Indiana the percentages were in the low 30 from three but again I, I think there's a lot of data and and evidence that suggests that he's got a chance to to be better than that even a plus shooter in the NBA simply put I, I like him a lot and with Orlando having building blocks like Paulo Bancaro and Franz Wagner to, to build around, um, the place to upgrade with another young, talented prospect is certainly in the backcourt. And I think Jalen hood Shafino fits that need perfectly. And certainly the Magic have the picks to keep building on that young core. Oklahoma City sit at number 12. Kyle, who do you have OKC select? Yeah, I have the Thunder going with another addition in the backcourt as well and taking Keontae George from Baylor. This is someone who actually did not compete in the scrimmages at the NBA Draft Combine. I but guess still. Keontae was actually kind of the top. He's going to go in the lottery. I really, I mean, I don't think he's a top 14 guy, at least in my opinion, but I feel like a lot of people are mocking him to go in the lottery. So maybe we penciled that in on draft night. Of the NBA draft combine because he had a stellar pro day workout in front of scouts. Well, I guess there's your reasoning. NBA executives, he, he showed some real impressive stuff in terms of his finishing ability, his, his ability to kind of create uh, just one one against zero. Some of his stuff finishing above the rim, I think, was really impressive from what I heard. He's uh, a shot maker, a guy who I think is going to be a microwave scorer in the NBA. And we saw at Baylor, he showed some good playmaking skills as well. Smart cutter. So, you know, I think my philosophy in, in taking players in a draft is always betting on someone who has the highest upside. To me, Keontae George has all-star upside. And I think at number 12 for OKC, this is about as good as value as you're going to get. All right, that's the Oklahoma City Thunder. Adam, the Toronto Raptors, we take it north of the border for number 13. Who you got? Well, I think on behalf of Masai Ujiri, I'm going to stick with a very Masai Ujiri type of pick, and I'm going to pick somebody who is, is long, athletic, up front. Now, I say this knowing that Toronto really needs help on the perimeter. They've got up front. Is he going to take lively? A lot of question marks with free agency. Uh, we really don't know if the roster is going to evolve in a big way. But what we've seen definitively in recent years is this Raptors front office is selling out, for lack of a better oh, term. Oh, Miller. Okay, well, kind of like this. I think Leonard Miller should go in the lottery. He's rising up my big board still. On length and athleticism. Uh, and in Leonard Miller, you get a guy who is a six foot ten lefty with a seven foot two wingspan. Actually declared for the draft a year ago, straight out of high school in Canada. Uh, did not get good feedback at the combine. Decided to commit to G League Ignite and has a chance to play his way into the lottery because of it. Um, projects is a very versatile front court defender, a versatile offensive piece who can be a lob threat, can be a, someone who plays off pick and rolls, but can also put the ball on the floor. So very much what Toronto has invested in in the last couple of years. We'll see if they do it again this year. All right, Gary, the Pelicans, they were a play-in team. I would imagine the health of Zion Williamson will have a whole lot to do with what they do in 23-24. 
But Nara on the clock right now at number 14. Who do you have for New Orleans? All right, so last pick of the lottery. This is probably the last one we're going to watch the analysis of is the New Orleans Pelicans. Uh, Grady Dick, uh, one-and-done wing out of Kansas. You mentioned Zion Williamson. I'm assuming, fingers crossed, at some point he is going to be healthy enough to consistently play in the NBA. If he is, if he is a Pelican next year. And Grady Dick falling to 14, I think, is a steal for them. And they can get more shooting for sure. And when he is healthy and on the court, uh, the best way to surround him is with as many shooters as possible to give him space to bully ball people over and over again, possession after possession. With Grady Dick, you're getting arguably, if not definitely, the best shooter in this draft. Shot above 40% from three in his one year at Kansas. He is, uh, but he's not just a shooter. I mean, he can also play make. He's a great cutter, uh, a good athlete, better than you, you might realize. He's skinny and probably a defensive liability at this point in his career, but it's not. I, don't, I disagree. I actually think he's an all right defender. Because of a lack of effort. Like, he'll put in the work on that end of the court. And you see it here. That, that last shot was probably his best attribute. Is He's not just a great shooter. He's a great, tough shot maker. I think NBA in the NBA these days shooting is probably the most valued skill you can bring to the table everybody needs them if you can't shoot the ball from the perimeter you can get played off the court in the playoffs we've seen it happen to multiple players this postseason Grady Dick is going to be able to reliably make that shot from day one Christian Brown who was at Kansas a year before him uh, was able to get into the rotation for a team that you know, it's just three wins away from uh, NBA championship as a rookie. Grady Dick is going to have that kind of impact as well. He'll play next season for a winner. And if it's New Orleans, then uh, that would be a great gift uh, to put around Zion Williams. All right, Gary's. So, yeah, he's got Grady Dick going in the last pick of the lottery. I think that is a steal when it, ter or it comes in the term of just pure value. You know something I'm coming around on is Derek Lively to the Pelicans at 14. I wonder, like, Jonas Valanciunas is their center. They don't really have, like, a center that they're – maybe is the future once Valanciunas is maybe off his contract or they move on from maybe Derek Lively could be that guy I would watch him and play possibly for the Pelicans at 14. He is Victor Wimanyama's teammate. They had the Hawks taking Bilal Kulbeli out of France Victor's teammate. Ah, the Hawks just taking another wing I just don't like I mean he could be Bilal could be a G, a G League guy for sure because I mean you have DeAndre Hunter we'll see if he gets traded they have Sadiq Bey they have AJ Griffin they have Bogdan Bogdanovich DeJounte Murray is playing at the shooting guard spot I just don't know if I like them adding another another wing. Whoa! He's got the Jazz taking Derek Whitehead at 16. I mean, the Jazz are a team that could definitely take the chance on Whitehead. I just feel like that's a little bit high at 16. They have the Lakers taking Jed Howard at 17. Somebody that could be an immediate impact player for them. I don't love his long-term value, but I think he's going to be one of the better rookies. Do I think he's going to have one of the better careers in this class? No, but as a rookie, yeah, he can help the Lakers out right away. But with Derek Lively on the board, I would take him over Jed Howard for sure. Whoa! Andre Jackson? 18, that is the highest I have ever seen him mocked. I don't agree with that at all. Kobe Bufkin's still on the board in this mock. There's a chance he's going in the top 10. So I'm disagreeing with Kobe Bufkin falling this far and Andre Jackson going this high. I do not see this happening whatsoever. And then they have Derek Lively going to the Warriors at 19. I mean, if he falls to 19, this is a fantastic pick for Golden State. Whoa, yeah, Jordan Hawkins. We haven't even mentioned his name. Falling to 20. I mean, great pick for Houston if he does. I just don't think he falls outside the top 15 at all. I think guys like he had, I think Jalen Hutchifino maybe going a little bit too high. Andre Jackson going a little bit high. So yeah, I don't see Hawkins falling this low in the draft. So yeah, just to recap, this is their 11 through 20. Like I said, I think Hutchifino is a little bit high. I think one of Leonard Miller, Keontae George, or Derek Whited can go a lot lower than we think. I think it could be Derek. Whitehead, and yeah, I think Jordan Hawkins can go up a little bit higher, and I don't see Andre Jackson being a top 20 pick. So they have Nick Smith falling to the Nets at 22. I like that pick. They have two first-round picks back-to-back. -back. I would use one 100% on Nick Smith. Still can't believe they don't have Kobe Bufkin still drafted. I think he's going to be a top 10 pick, or at least a lottery pick, and here he's going 22 to the Nets. Hey, I like Nick Smith more than some other people, and I really like Kobe Bufkin more than some other people, so this would be a two-thumbs-up draft for me from the Brooklyn Nets. Bryce Sensiball going to the Blazers at 23. His his value seems all over the place as well. Chris Murray going to the Kings at 24. I mocked this in the mock with Jidel. 
it would be cool because of his brother Keegan Murray already on the Golden or excuse me the Sacramento Kings I don't know why I almost said the Warriors Hami Hake is going in the first round here to Memphis I don't see him going in the first round as much this is probably the highest I have ever seen him mocked at 25 and that was the same guy that mocked Andre Jackson pretty high and we have Ryan Repair going to the Pacers at 26 I think this is really good value for them Brandon Pozemski going to the Hornets at 27 I'm also a fan of this pick I think he should 100% go in the first round GG Jackson going to the Jazz at 28 I don't really like GG Jackson too much as a prospect but I think if it's your third first round pick and it's at 28 why not? Noah Conley going to the Pacers at 29. I think this is also good value. He can give you some defensive upside and you're taking him and Taylor Hendricks in this draft. Some good power forward addition. And lastly, Amari Bailey going to the Clippers at 30. I don't really like this pick, especially when you have guys like Maxwell Lewis still on the board or maybe City Sissoko on the board if you're going for a little bit more upside. And they don't have a recap of the last 10 picks, unfortunately. But yeah, that is me reacting to CBS Sports full first round mock draft. Drop a like if you guys did enjoy this. I will have probably one more reaction mock draft video maybe two but i think one more and it's going to be a cool one where i react to 2k's mock draft still don't know if i'm going to post that on this channel or 2k's channel but yeah thank you all for watching i love you guys and i'll catch you on the next one peace